Hi everyone. Today we are going to see about Android Intent. So in the first part of this lesson, we'll cover about the concept related to explicit intent and its purpose. And finally, we'll practically implement the purpose of using explicit intent using Android in Studio by building some applications. So and then afterward, we'll talk about implicit type of intent. So let's talk about the meaning of intent and what, what, what it means by intent in, in, in the context of Android programming. Okay, so Android application component may sometimes need to connect to another application or another activity inside the same application. So like, for example, uh, if you take Facebook application, when we hit Facebook icon from our mobile phone, it will show us the login page and then <clears throat> Then if we provide that the correct information, it will let us to go to the, our homepage so that you can uh, visit the recent posts and other news feeds. So that indirectly means that our application may have multiple activity or multiple GUI. So, so in order to navigate from one activity to another activity, we use the concept or the, the concept that's called intent. So you need to specify your intention so that Android runtime will take care of it. The same thing sold. For example, let's say in our application, we want to integrate our app with a phone call because by default, every phone has a phone call app built on it. So, so with the concept of uh, implicit intent, you can request Android runtime to open a phone call button or a contact for you so that you can automatically integrate your application with those which is already built or those which is available on your mobile phone. So that's the core concept behind Indian Intent. If you want to exchange the data between two different applications, you can use Intent. And this is technically called explicit Intent. And there are times we need, sometimes we need to also use implicit one and we'll cover that one in our next lesson. So simply saying, Intent allows you to interact with components from the same application as well as through different applications. For example, an activity can start an external activity for taking a picture, making a phone call, or scanning a Wi-Fi nearby or around your mobile. So that's the sole purpose of using intent. So, and there are two types of intent and explicit one in this case, uh, you need to specifically specify the, the specific activities that you want to launch from your current activity. Whereas in this case, you are asked to, or you, your, your intention is to call or to open another application from your cell phone or from your app. So this is a typical name. For example, let's say, uh, let me show you this one. So for example, let's say you have two interface. The first activity or GUI contains this information, which says, hello world, and the second one says second form. So my the, the intention here is that we want to show the second form when the user clicks on this button. Okay. So and similarly, when a user clicks on this button, I want to move the application to the first form. So in this case, I'm going to use explicit intent. So to do that, just you need to call these functions in your button click event. So on the button click property of this button, you need to write intent, then variable name, new intent, and you need to say this, that means from this current class, and where do you want to go? You need to specify that. So from this class, go to the second form. Or if you have third form, you may say, go to the third form. So it will work like that, okay? So this is how things work. And when we come to, uh, And similarly, if you wanted to do it for this one, you need to specify this and then first form. And in, in this way, you can allow the navigation from one form to another form, okay? So that's the core purpose of implicit in that. So the, if you need to write this code, you can inside uh, button next click, uh, you need to write this line of code and you need to do the same thing for this one. So the second argument specify where you want to go, okay? That's the core purpose. And, and again, sometimes we also want to pass some sort of information from one form to another form, okay? 
So in that case, you need to use a concept that's called bundle. For example, take a look at this example. Here we have one edit table text. And, and when a user click on next button, we want to send this data to the second form. Okay. This may be useful, for example, after you type username and the password and hit on the next button, you want to say, welcome, Ababa, welcome, Ali, something like that. So to do this kind of information, you need to use a concept of bundle, okay? So in bundle, before calling the start activity, as we did in the previous example, in this case, you need to upload some extra information on the activity while uh, navigating the user from one form to another. So you can use a bundle. So you need to specify the key and value what you are going to send. So this is a kind of key. So you can use this key to get the values that sent from um, form one to form two. Okay. Then in between you need to say intent dot put extras in the bundle that you make. So you can add or pass as many variable as you like. And so Maybe later on we can implement this concept practically. And then on the receiving side, this, this part is for the sending part. On the set receiving part, you need to call a function get intent. And inside that intent, you need to call get extras. If something is already packed and uh, uploaded into that intent, you can extract that information and you can display it on your phone. So that's the core purpose. And uh, let's build some simple application, okay? And then we may call it like a login page. Let's do some sort of login page. And then you can get to learn how to uh, implement this concept by yourself. So let's switch to Android Studio. And I'm, I'm going to create a new project. New project, this one. As usual, I'm going to select the empty activity in the next. And let's call this one uh, login. Login up. Okay. Java and API version that I'm using is 29. So finish. So it's trying to uh, let me close this one. And it is trying to build all uh, the required package for us. And once it gets rid of that, we can create some sort of GUI or graphical interface. And then we can work on uh, the, uh, the concept of intent. Okay. So by default, when we create a new application, uh, Android Studio will create one activity, Java code, and one XML file, yes? So for example, here, you can see that we have only one Java code, that's main activity or startup activity. And if we expand the resource folder and under that, if you expand the layout, and we can get only one XML file that says activity main. That means this one, the one that contains Hello World, okay? So here we need to modify this one a little bit. But before doing that, let's add one more form, okay? We want to add one more form because we wanted to implement the concept of intent. So I'm going to add one activity. So when you add another activity, it will automatically create one Java file and one XML file for you. So now right click on your package name here, this one, and click new and search for activity and then select empty activity, this one, see? I'm going to repeat this step, right click here, new, activity, empty activity. And then you need to give it a name. Let's call this one homepage, homepage. The first one is going to be the login page, so this is going to be homepage. So click finish, yes. And then now you can see we have two XML file and two Java file here. One is home page and the second one is main activity. So, so now let's create some sort of GUI. So let me open the first activity, which is activity main, the one that contains hello world. And I'm going to modify this one. And let's minimize this. And then and let's change this one to, sorry. Uh, show system UI, yeah. This is our interface. And here is a code, let me split this. Yes, like this. So 
So I'm going to uh, uh, change this one a little bit. Minimize, yeah. So let me remove this one, this edit tab, and let's change this one to linear layout. L I then hit enter, and then let's specify the orientation because orientation is one of the important attributes and let's make it vertical. Now let's create uh, some text view. Just uh, let's make it wrap content and some text. And I want to write here, um, uh, let's call it Amur University, University login page. So you see some text is displaying here and let's change some text property. Let's say text color. Maybe I can say at color, white, black, purple. Maybe if it makes sense. The text color and I may say text style. Let's make it a bold. Uh, style, where is the style? And here I want to make it bold. And it's called the gravity. Center, you see, I put at the center, center of this layout. And then maybe we can increase the size, but it's quite enough. Then I closed it. And then at the bottom, I wanted to type some, uh, uh, I wanted to add, another attributes or views. But maybe let's say, let's add uh, username editable text here, username. So I'm going to say editable text. Uh, for this one, let's call it match parent and wrap content. And I think we have hint, some hint. So this is going to be Username, hint. So here again, I'm going to add uh, additional information for this one. That's ID is very important. ID is equal to at ID. Then you can give, uh, this is what? Editable text, uh, username. So I close it here. Let's do the same thing for the password. I'm going to copy this one and paste it here. What's wrong with this? I don't know. And yeah, I need to change this one to password. Second form. Password. And at the end, we need to create a button. That's a login button. Let me say button, wrap content, wrap content. And here I'm going to say text property, which is going to be, sorry, text is equal to, uh, login and then add on click property because it's a button button login click because we are going to use this function to create a click event for this button and closed and I don't know what's wrong with this one why it's not accepting this And this is a password. Password. Let me check why why I'm getting uh, some sort of error here. Yeah, now it's fixed. It. So edit text username, and now the interface looks good. Let me check it. Let's run, and we can run it on the emulator, and, and let's take a look at the output. Okay.
Istikalukati, since now I hope uh, here is the emulator. It's trying to connect. Hmm. Oh, you see, our app looks good. Yes, the interface is good, yes. So our Mood University login page, here is a username because it's a hint. So when we click on this one, its username will disappear. Yes, you see? So that's a hint. So you need to use the hint attribute for this purpose. By default, say username. So as you start typing, that will disappear. Okay, so that's the beauty. And now we didn't try anything for the login, yes? So our application will crash when we click on that button. So we need to write some sort of code. So now we have almost done with the GUI part for the first form. And now let's create the home page. For the home page, again, we need to do some sort of editing. So here is our home page, and nothing is inside. So let's move to the code and let's change this one to inner layout. So here we may need to specify the orientation as we did for the first form and here is vertical and then now I'm going to type here editable text or text view. Let's say when the user uh, login we want to type something uh, match parents and wrap content and I want to say here the text welcome to uh home page your home page or i may say here let me write something different uh amud university students yeah this is let's make it like this and then maybe i can uh, hide the emulator for this time and let's do some sort of split and then let's specify the gravity, uh, gravity to center. Yeah, now it's showing up in the center. Mm. Like this. And, and below that, I wanted to create something that say welcome. If we type uh, on the first interface, if we type here, if let's say the username is Ali. So I wanted to say welcome Ali. Okay, so to do that, I need to create another editable text here. And let me call this one. And I wanted to type some text here, default text. Says welcome, that's enough. And I need to give a unique ID for this one. And add plus ID, let me say my text view. Okay. So, yeah, that's it. And then maybe, uh, maybe we may need another button here so that we can move back to the login page. So that button may be log out, okay? So wrap content, wrap content, and then text property for this one is going to be log out. And we need to add on click property for this button too. And I may say button logout click. Okay. Let's close it. Done. So for this one, I need to establish a link. Yes. So for this ID, so my TV. So um, I will go to the home page here. I need to create another variable here. Is it uh, text view? Text view. Uh, v, I can simply say V or TV. So I need to specify what is this. Text V is equal to find view by ID, R dot ID, because we already learned about this one last time. So just I'm um, not uh, explaining that uh, again. So I did the link and then now let's move to the, the first code or the first interface. So. Let's do the basic task first without the concept of username and the password. So whenever user click on login button, we want to move it to the second page, okay? That's something we are going to do. So 
I need to write the on-click property for this button. So button login click. So here I'm going to write uh, create one function public void this one view v yes then alt enter to import this library and then i'm going to write that code so they simply call intent i is equal to new intent so you need to specify here this and where do you want to go I wanted to open the home pages, so I will say home page dot class. Then I, you can simply say start activity, this one, then I. So automatically, when a user clicks on the login button, it will take the user to the second form automatically because I specify that I wanted to open the home page using explicit intent. So let's check this one. Notice that. Up to this step, we didn't create any logic about username and the password authentication. What we are doing is just when a user click on login button, we are letting him in. So we are going to check that. So uh, let's run it on the emulator, and then we can take out a look at the output. So you see now, when we launch our application, the main activity comes, and uh, what we are going to do is that when a user click on login button, it needs to move to the second form. Let's, let's check that, login. You see, it says Amur University will come and we have a logout button, but we didn't turn anything so far. So we need to write separate code for this one. When a user click on logout, we may want to move it to the first page. So just let's copy this one for simplicity. For simplicity, and then we need to create another function here. Button logout click. I think the name is uh, like that. This one I need to replace it by this. So rename this one like this, and and we need to change this one to uh, main activity because we wanted to move to the the, the 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 login page. Yes, the reverse of the previous step. So let's try to install it again. Yeah, so login, logout, you see, we are switching between two forms, login, logouts, you see? So, so this is the concept behind explicit intent. And now let's pass some variable from here to the second form. That is, let's say, I, I type it here, Ahmed. So what I want is that, when I click on login button, I want to say welcome Ahimed. Okay. So to do that, we need to use a concept of bundle. So we need to modify this code a little bit. So just uh, add bundle to send username to the home page. Okay. So to do that, first we need to uh, link, uh, establish a link between uh, the username editable text with the Java code. So what is the ID for this one? The ID is this one. So I need to do that. So go to here and I need to create here, uh, not here actually, here. I need to create an editable text. Let me say ET. And I need to, to find that ET is equal to find me by id resource dot id dot this one and now i can use the concept of bundle yes so i can create some sort of string let me say data my data is equal to then i need to get that text edit text dot get text something that was written by the user and I need to change to string. And if there is any extra space, I can trim it. Just you can call trim function. And then now I have that data. So if the user type I made, that variable be stored here. Then define a bundle variable or bundle object here. It's equal to new bundle. Just put semicolon, then b dots put string because we are sending the string data type and this will take a key value. So you can give a unique key. 
So maybe you say uh, data key. And then what you are going to send is my data is something that's written to this editable text. Okay, so far it's good. Now we can use this concept and here I need to add intent dot put extra. And I'm going to pass B uh, put extras, then, then put semicolon here. Now, this way we can send the data that was provided by the user here to the second form. Okay, and, and in the second form, we need to get this variable by this key, and then you can display it inside the editable text. So to do that, we need to modify this code here, somewhere here. Now we need to call the intent, call the bundle again, because we already seen the bundle. I'm going to say b is equal to get intent. So we are going to get some extras, yes. And first, we need to check if it is empty or not. Otherwise, we can get the runtime error. So let me say, if uh, bz is equal to null, that means if it is empty, just return nothing. Otherwise, we are going to get that string variable. String oh, received data is equal to, we are going to get from what? Uh, b dot get string. And we need to provide that key. What is the name of key that we send? We can get it from here. This is a key, data key. You need to use the same name, data key. And now we can write what we get from the first form to that uh, text view, this text view. So I can simply say text view is equal to, uh, no, I can simply dot say text. First, I need to get the, the text which says welcome, or I can simply type it here, welcome space plus hmm, received data, what I received. Received, uh, what I call it, this name, why, why it's not showing up, this one. Yes, yeah, now it seems good. So let, let, let's check it. So stop it here. Let me hide this one. Uh, show video panel. I go to country. Yes. So rerun it, and then we can see at the output. So you see here, if I type uh, Ahimed, and after I click on login, it needs to say what? Welcome Ahimed. You see, it's working. It's sending the data from the first form to the second form. Log out. Let me change this one to Muhammad and log in. It is saying, Welcome, Muhammad. Okay. So, in this way, we can pass data from one form to another form. So, in the next video, I will show you how to create a login page by using the concept of authentication. Okay. So, so and after one, we'll talk about uh, the concept of uh, implicit intent. Okay.